I am joined now by former New Hampshire Republican Senator Kelly Ayotte, who is uh, in New Hampshire. Uh, Senator Ayotte, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Casey. Good to be with you. I want to start by talking about the president's tweets over the weekend. He has been talking about uh, criticizing the, the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, in a very intense way. You uh, are a former prosecutor, former state attorney general. Is this the right thing for the president of the United States to be doing? Casey, let me just state the obvious. Uh, this is not a, a good thing for him to do or a smart thing for him to do, especially with what happened on Friday with Mike Flynn, uh, with Special Counsel Mueller's investigation, because none of this can be helpful um, as you look at this going forward. So I think like many people, I would tell him to get off Twitter on this. Let's talk a little bit more uh, about that Flynn investigation. Uh, some of the discussion uh, on the Sunday shows this morning, Susan Collins saying that uh, this Mueller investigation might bear fruit. Uh, wh where do you think the special counsel is going, and what is your level of concern uh, for the president's exposure on this? Well, certainly Mike Flynn, uh, he, he could have been uh, charged with other offenses, and now that he has this cooperating agreement, it's very significant. Uh, the question is really, again, is there any evidence of collusion? Certainly Mike Flynn would likely be in a position to know that, or whether this goes deeper into the White House. So this is a very significant development, and we'll have to understand. I'm assuming, as a former prosecutor, that special counsel Mueller would not have made this cooperation agreement with Flynn because he could have charged him with other things, um, that he, there must be some information that he's interested in. You yourself made a decision uh, when you were running your own reelection campaign uh, that, that ended up being a difficult one, as of course the president was swept uh, into office. But Democrats won uh, congressional uh, your congressional race. It, what is your advice to, to the Republican Party right now on how to deal with this president? Do they do you think that, that enough of them are, are being are they being aggressive enough in criticizing him, or would you advise them, uh, be based on your experience, to step back farther than they are? You know, I would tell them to be themselves, and I would tell them that when they can work with him on policy that they believe in that's good for the country, they should do it. Uh, but when he does things that they don't agree with or are inconsistent with his values, they should be very direct about it. One of the, the conversations that we've we've been having uh, as a country is about sexual harassment uh, in the workplace, in politics, kind of across the board, and there is a real reckoning. Right. Uh, I want to ask I want to ask you uh, first of all about your own experiences. Did you have any Me Too experiences in, in your working life, or especially in the Congress? No, I can't say that, that I've been a victim, but I have to tell you, Casey, I was a, a prosecutor, a former attorney general, and as I look at what's happening in Washington, I don't see the type of accountability that there should be. And when we look at the media, you have Matt Lauer being fired, you have Charlie Rose, you have Bill O'Reilly, um, but in Congress, there doesn't seem to be the kind of standardized handling of these cases. And this has to be taken much more seriously than I see happening right now in Washington, D.C. How would you apply that standard to the president of the United States? Well, Casey, you, in my campaign, I made the decision um, not to vote for him and to write in uh, Mike Pence because when those tapes came out. So I've been very clear on this, and I've been very consistent. Um, but I, as I look at what's happening, whether it's uh, Congressman Kanye's or Roy Moore, it seems like both parties aren't taking this with the level of seriousness that they should. Let's change gears just a little bit and uh, talk about the t massive tax reform plan uh, that just passed the Senate late in, into the night on Friday night, Saturday morning. Uh, there, this is a bill that Republicans are basically assuming is going to grow the economy enough to make up for almost one and a half trillion dollars it could add to the national debt. I, I want to take a look at something that you said earlier while you were when you were a member of Congress, and then we'll talk about it. Take a look. 
We should be in the United States Senate today and next week talking about how we are going to put together a blueprint that makes sure that we do not continue to borrow from countries like China, that we do not continue to enslave our children uh, with the debt that this country is accumulating. And we know that if we do not address this, that the greatest country in the world will go bankrupt. And we do not have a tax problem in this country. We have a spending problem. Would you have voted for this tax bill? Casey, I have to tell you, you, you probably should have also looked at my speeches where I talked about us having the highest uh, corporate tax rate in the developed world. Because one thing that I see that this bill can do, um, I don't like everything in this bill, uh, but I will tell you that dropping the corporate rate and having our companies, where we have a code now that's encouraging us to, to have our companies have money overseas and bring that home, I think that will have a positive impact on the economy. So we have to see whether this bill actually has the economic growth that Republicans think it will, um, but I have no doubt that we had to deal with that business tax rate because it, it's not been good in terms of keeping jobs here and investment here. Do you think that the process that Republicans are using to push this through uh, is one that you consider to be valid? I mean, Democrats have complained that there's writing scrawled in the margins of the bill, that they only got a couple hours to take a look at it. Do you think it was handled the right way? It's a little hard to hear Democrats talk about the process after what happened with the Obamacare and the health care bill. So, uh, you know, that one, the criticism coming from them, uh, there always can be a better process. Um, they did have a hearing before the Finance Committee and uh, a markup of that portion of the bill coming forward. Um, listen, I'd always like to see more time and a better process for any bill, but it's a li for, to hear Democrats criticizing the process is a little much given the way that they've handled it when they were in charge. Kelly Ayotte, thank you so much for your time tonight. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me, Casey. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.